numbers are diminishing, they are reducing, and we are not getting good judges. Reason is the mechanism which we have found appointing judges and judges just to judge that has failed. That is in the right from warning it has said so. Now the another question is, then what is the alternative? So the bill is here. We have discussed about it, <laughs> about the bills. Now friends, there is another, I mean, I, I am apprehending because the executives in guise of deal, this bill may encroach upon the judiciary because our history, I can tell you, when I joined the bar during the emergency, then there was a judgment delivered by <coughs> Bhumiputra. Bhumiputra is, is uh, this, this magazine was run by Navjivan Press. And Navjivan Press is established by Gandhiji. So in those days, even during the emergency, they have made certain expressions against the government. And they have written something against the government. And therefore, that case was taken before the High Court. And ultimately, three judges are decided against the government. And all three judges have been transferred in those days. That is known as SSA judgment. So this is how this started it. And then after that, there is a superstition of judges in the, our country. This is how it has happened so far India is concerned. And then after of ADM, Jabalpur and all that, it is known to us. But so far, friends, I tell you that our neighboring countries are concerned. What has happened? The executive, what they did. So Iftikar Ahmed, so Pakistan Chief Justice is concerned. And now Rajpakse, so far Sri Lanka is concerned. What has happened to the impeachment of the Chief Justice of the Sri Lanka? And same thing is happening in Zimbabwe, Nigeria and other countries. So the executives are very keen to have a committed judiciary. So in the guise of, as in the morning, Mr. Burt has suggested, there are two bills. One is amendment of the constitution. And after the amendment of the constitution, they may, tomorrow, they may give some another dimension to this bill. So we should be very care careful about it. This is, I am telling you. Now the second thing which I want to highlight is that we are discussing about the permanent this commissions and this high court judges and Supreme Court judges. Friends, I'll tell you another thing. So far, large numbers of population of countries concerned, they are connected with the lower judiciary. Lower judiciary, ulti ultimately it has gone to the dogs, I say so. because. In our state, I don't know about other states, but nowadays a fresh LLB, he, he can be appointed as JMFC. And we, we have got lot, I mean, found a lot of complaints from different bars. Because a person who has, doesn't have an experience has been appointed as JMFC, he doesn't know in what cases the remand is to be granted, in what cases bail is to be granted, he doesn't know anything. So this is, this is how it happens. And more particularly, more mediocre, I mean, judges are coming. And that mechanism also eroded. Not only this mechanism, so there also I suggest to the bar, bar association to take some initiatives in that direction. So some experienced judges should be appointed in lower judiciary. This is how otherwise it will go to the docks. This is how it is happening. Friends, right from morning, we are discussing about this and there are many eminent advocates. They have so express their views and there are others are also so i'll sum up my address here otherwise there are many things to say thank you very much thank you sir now may i request the youngest player of our dice mr prasant kumar to play like shikhar dhawan just to entertain the crowd Mr. Santi Bhushan, Mr. Anil Diman, my other colleagues on the dais. I'm a replacement speaker, but I have become a lot wiser from what has been discussed since morning. Most of the dimensions of the topic has already been discussed threadbare and in great detail. But nevertheless, as a younger member of the bar, I have some perspective with which I want to add something more to the discussion, or at least make an attempt in that direction. Now, first of all, the collegium system, we are pinning down the blame on its functioning because we think that the judges 
who manned it from time to time have not been able to do justice to this particular aspect of their job. And that is why one of the suggestions is that any system of appointments which is to be fashioned must be manned by full-time people who can do justice to this job. But I think aloud how this stage has come to pass. According to me, the judges were wonderful in doing their job of doing justice and protecting independence of judiciary. But as they are judges, while delivering the judgments, they ignored the administrative aspect of the innovation they were suggesting through the interpretation of law. In any government, in any department, whenever a new structure is created, a new bureaucracy is created to run it. So one of the major flaws was that collegium system was fashioned, but no bureaucracy to support the collegium system was put in place. So what was lacking was an independent secretariat or a supporting body which could do all the legwork. An appropriate planning for personnel was required. That did not happen, so that left huge gaps both in the capacity and ability for the collegium to perform its onerous duties. That is where the roots of the failure lie, according to me. And when there is no system in place which puts a path of rules and regulations where the groundwork is done, the discretion comes into play. And when unfettered discretion comes into play and it is only on the basis of impressions, get informal gathering of information, etc., appointments are to be made and that too in such large numbers, even the best intentioned people could not perform that duty. Another thing is that whenever we are interfering and introducing change in very complex structures, you have to think in the future. Perhaps the impulse behind the bar going before the court with a petition and also later on the presidential reference in the two judges case was that there has to be a change in the system. The immediate scenario was what compelled to bring about that change. The immediate scenario at that time was that the appointments which were made were not very satisfactory. But what was not realized is that those appointments were made. So when you shifted the appointment making power from the executive to the judiciary through fashioning a collegium, it was not realized that those people who have already been appointed perhaps be amongst the people who will later on run the system. And that is where the utmost integrity of the system, the quality of the system which was to be ensured, according to me, became flawed at the threshold. Now the question is way forward. We have two bills, one suggesting a composition of the commission, which rightly Mr. Bhatt and other speakers have spoken, can be changed because the Constitution Amendment Bill provides an unfettered mandate to simple majority in the Parliament and perhaps even ordinance making power. Then from the beginning, as we were struggling, writing to the government to provide us with the details of the bill and all, our apprehension was, and it has come true, that a system will be put in place where again there will be no mechanism spelt out 
to run that. So only vague power has been given that the commission will make its own procedure, how it is going to function, and all these things are uncertain. And it is this uncertainty which creates another layer of doubt in the system which has been suggested. It makes it much more precarious. So what we have, we have possibility of what is being suggested being changed, and we also have the same flaws of lack of transparency, lack of a machinery to run the system, all in place, they have not been addressed. So there is no change except you are changing the group of people who will sit on the table to decide who is to be appointed as judges. That is no change, that is no reform. I will just also address that Mr. Andhyarujina has said that judicial commissions, appointment commissions in South Africa, Nigeria, other countries have not worked judicial appointments commission system in United Kingdom has worked, then again I will say that two things are very important. UK always runs on conventions. Our founding fathers gave us an elaborate written constitution, at that time the biggest in the world, because they realized that those who are going to govern this country, run it according to the constitution, will require guidance in terms of elaborate provisions being in place. That is why anything which is being put forward has to have elaborate provisions. It cannot be left to X, Y, or Z group of persons to fashion them later on. That was the wisdom of the founding fathers which we must continue to respect and follow. Looking close at hand, Sri Lanka, the instance was given. Pakistan, yes, I was part of the four-member fact-finding commission to Pakistan when the judges were deposed there. And firsthand, we interviewed the judges and also suggested the measure how to restore the system. But after that, Pakistan, having suffered this kind of assault on judicial independence, created through a 19th Amendment a hybrid system, which has most of the features of our collegium, whatever be the other things they know, that we are the same, more or less same stock of people and our democracies are in same way confronted with as many problems. So Pakistan has created a system in which there is a commission which is a constitutionally entrenched commission with nine members, chief justice, four senior judges of Supreme Court, a former chief justice or judge of Supreme Court nominated by the serving chief justice in consultation with the four serving judges of Supreme Court. Attorney General of Pakistan, Federal Minister of Law, one senior advocate nominated by the Pakistan Bar Council. The recommendations made by this commission are presented to a parliamentary committee consisting of eight members, four of them from treasury benches and four from the opposition. So, in theory, they have tried to put a balanced system in place. They can scrutinize the recommendation made, but the ultimately, if commission again recommends, the appointments have to go through. Malaysia, though it has a more contained democracy, and the constitutional provision provides for the system which is, can be interpreted where the executive controls the reins of appointment making pass, 
to higher judiciary. But in practice, they have fashioned a system in which the consultation is paramount. And that has happened primarily because Bar Council of Malaysia has played a stellar role in creating public opinion at each step. And they even carried out in 1980s, their chief justice and other two justices were impeached and removed. It is Bar Council of Malaysia which took a very courageous steps after 20 years to reevaluate and re-examine the whole issue by appointing a panel of eminent persons. And I'm proud to say that that panel was headed by none other than our former Chief Justice of India, Justice J.S. Varma. And that panel, Justice Varma was very conscious, not only deals with the issue at hand, but lays down the principles as well and follows the best practices. On other issues also, Bar Council of Malaysia was very proactive. So government had to, in the face of public opinion created by Bar Council of Malaysia, seed the ground and in practice, they have not been able to ignore the bar's strident opposition to the appointments which could be wrong. So that has acted as a check whether there is a law in place or not. The law has remained the same. In Philippines, we had discussion whether we have, uh, you know, we should have nominees on the bar, on the commission and all. In Philippines, they have addressed this issue in a certain different way. They have a judicial appointments commission which makes the recommendations. It does not go through any other political system like in Pakistan. But they have, in their whole system, provided for what is called the weightage criteria. The weightage criteria is that commission's recommendation of three names for one post, three names will be provided for one post, that will have X weightage in the overall criteria. On that, that person's repute and other reports and assessment will have another set of weightage. And one set of weightage is also the opinion of the bar, the integrated bar of Philippines. So they have tried to balance various factors and come up with a system. This convention is primarily to assess the global best practices and fashion for ourselves what suits us. The system in UK may not be entirely suitable to us. We should dilate more on the jurisdictions nearer home or the democracies who face similar challenges. This is a beginning and I hope and trust that we will continue to work more on this, to come up with the best practices, but then there is a whole period of struggle ahead of us because whether Bar does it or does not do it, I think the government is fairly determined to go through with the legislative motions what they have proposed, <coughs> for which there has not been any consultation, discussion with the Bar and other stakeholders. That is what is the biggest problem and unless the bar, we collectively rise and work on this, we will be faced with a fate accompli. Thank you very much. May I request Mr. V. Shekhar, who is from a bowler to a batsman, then a lawyer to a senior lawyer, to give his all-rounder <laughs> experience and views and comments on this. All in cricket mode. Well, 
I am really privileged to be in the midst of the oldest member of the bar, Mr. Shanti Bhushan, and also amongst us the youngest member, Mr. Prashant Kumar. I cannot say anything about Mr. Shanti Bhushan because he is for me more than a godlike figure. I had occasion to brief him in some of the matters and so also I do not know Mr. Anil Devan would remember that I had an occasion to brief him in his ambassador hotel office in Bennett Coleman Mata, which, we, which he led us before just in Chennaparadi, A.P. Sen and Bengatramaya. There we had an occasion, rather I had an occasion to learn more about the law of the intricities. That apart, one thing is very clear here in the debate which we are having. Well, what happened to us? Pre-1950, post-1950, the system was working okay. Then came the emergency. The onslaught on the judiciary, very rightly pointed out by Mr. Shanti Bhushan, which was fought and ultimately the rule of law, the judicial review system was installed in its place. Then came the problem of transfer of judges, 1983. One of the Chief Justice of the Madras High Court, I remember, I think, Mr. K. B. N. Singh, 